Hi everyone, welcome back to Shimania. I hope you guys are all doing well. Today we're going to set up two new shim tanks for creating our shims with underground filtration. It's going to be interesting. We're going to start it right now. Okay guys, here we have a two shim tanks which I custom built and they all go into my shim rack. The size of the tank is roughly about 37 by 35 by 40 centimeter deep. So the volume is roughly about 50 liters and we're going to set them up with underground filtration. And as you can see, I already installed the glass partition wall here and here to create the space for underground filtration. So for this setup, I'm going to use underground filter set from Ista and every set comes with the two plates and one uplifting tube. Let's open it up and uh, see what we have inside the box. So you can see we have a two um, plates for underground filtration and we have uplifting tube as well. So I want to create a, a large underground filter area at the back of each tank. So I want to, to make a two tubes at the back. So make sure we have plenty of filtration plenty of soil in the underground filtration. And you guys maybe have a question why I don't use my famous acrylic underground filter box with beautiful logo on it like Shreem Mania and yeah, don't get me wrong, this box works great and I'm very happy with the result when I use this box, I have a great success with my shrimps. The only problem with this box is that the soil doesn't last long in it because it's not my soil inside. For example, if I fit it in this tank, the soil is going to last probably about six, eight months and then it starts losing the buffering capacity and the shrimps stop thriving. So this is the main reason why I want to create a big underground filter box with more soil in it. And if, for example, I fit two underground filter boxes inside of each tank, I'm going to end up with the little gaps between the boxes where all the muck going to be accumulated and where the machine is going to get inside. It's not going to be ideal. Okay guys, here you go. I just cut the plates and installed the tubing. And as you can see, the two plates is not enough because tanks are wider than 30 centimeters and two plates is exactly 30 centimeters. So I had to cut two small pieces and attach them to the sides and it works great now. So we end up that the tubing are not in the corner and slightly moved from the corner, which I'm happy about because if when in the corner is too far away from the middle and the soil in the middle might not work as great as soil at the end. So now let's fit them inside and they fit perfectly I already checked. So let, let me just show you. There is no gaps or anything you can see. And one more thing I want to mention that I made this glass partition only nine centimeters tall, which roughly about 10 inches tall. And I wouldn't recommend to do it as tall as that because you take a look at these filters. That filter is roughly about 11 or 12 centimeters tall and they keep clogging and the floor is not as good as in the boxes which are slightly shorter. For example, this box about 10 centimeters and the floor is much better. And guys, from my experience, it's always better to make the UGF box wider rather than taller because it's gonna be a better floor and less clogging. So now we're ready to put the soil inside our tanks and start our cycle. And now guys, let's choose the soil for these tanks. And this is all soil I have at this moment. I probably need to buy some more in the near future. So this is uh, ADA Amazonia, very famous soil, old version. This is ADA Amazonia, new version. This is master soil, which I never used before, but I heard a lot of good feedback about the soil. So we're probably gonna give it a try today. This is a platinum soil. I think it's the same family as a master soil, but it's like a light version. And this is pH 5.5, Easter Shrimp. This soil doesn't leak ammonia and this soil is not very rich and I'm not gonna use it as a main soil. Maybe I'm gonna use it as just a mix soil or put it on the bottom of the tank, but not in underground filter boxes. Okay guys, I made my choice. I'm gonna use two of these soils. For one tank, I'm gonna use ADA Amazonia new version. And I had a great result with this soil before. So hopefully this time is gonna be a good result as well. And I'm gonna try master soil, which I never tried before, but I heard a lot of good things about this soil. And I saw a lot of Polish breeders use this soil with a good result. So hopefully it's gonna be a good result for me as well. And yeah, guys, take a look at the shrimp here. Wow, I just started feeding them. They look fantastic, this Golden Galaxy fishbone shrimp. So let's start with ADA Amazonia first and put it in this jar. So this is two liter jug. And let's see how much soil we're gonna fit in each tank. So now let's start with this tank on the right. It's gonna be with ADA Amazonia one. So now we have two liters of soil here. And I think we need another two, at least two liters, yeah? As you notice, guys, I didn't put any media or any sponges at the bottom of the filter because I want to maximize the space for soil. I want to use as much as possible soil inside my underground filter. And guys, take a look at this surface area here inside this UGF. The water is going to be running constantly through that soil and it's tons of surface area. We don't need extra. I mean, the shrimps, they have only little by a lot 
they don't produce a lot of waste they don't fish so they don't need media believe me guys so we have uh, another two liters of soil let's see if it's gonna be enough now okay guys we have our AD Amazon inside our filter and we managed to feed four liters of soil here inside our UGF it's a lot of soil for underground filter and I hope it's going to be last much longer and buffer the water much better now. And if you compare with my other tanks, for example, before I only had one underground filter box. This box is only contained about 1.82 liter of soil. That's why I had this problem that the soil is only last for 6-8 months and now it stopped buffering the water already after one year and this is why I start to reset these tanks these tanks used to be here one tank used to be here another tank used to be here now I wash them and I set them up again with the new method with the new underground filter and I hope it's gonna work much better this time now I'm gonna add a little bit of Easter shrimp pH 5.5 to the bottom of the tank just because I like the color of this soil I'm not gonna add too much that's probably should be enough I like to mix this soil here because it's not very important which soil you're gonna use and now for this tank I'm gonna use master soil never used it before so let's open it up and see how this look like and guys take a look at this color I just put a little bit of ADA Amazonia on top just for comparison so you can see master soil slightly darker but almost the same as ADA Amazonia yeah I hope you can see the difference so now let's add this master soil inside this UGF filter I'm gonna put the same soil at the bottom of the tank it looks, it looks good to me There you go guys we finished with the soil now and take a look at the tanks they start to look beautiful already huh? so now it's time to add some bacterial powder and then we can put our tanks inside this rack and start to filling them with the water so I'm gonna use the same bacterial powder as I used before and this bacterial powder is from Shrima Fair and also you can buy it from Tai Cheng guys I'm gonna leave a link in the description below where you can buy this powder but the, the problem is the amount of the powder the guys selling is about one kilogram or half a kilogram so it's quite a lot and it costs a lot so you probably don't want to do it if you if you only have one or two tanks so instead you can use any other bacterial powder for example I had the same good result when I use SL Aqua bacterial powder and guys I know even some people use bacteria E to set up the tanks and with a good result so if you cannot get this powder or this powder just get bacteria here and it should work you know I think on my last few tank setups I use quite a lot of bacterial powder which links to a lot of buildup waste at the end of the cycle and I think this time I'm not gonna be using as much as before so for this tank I'm probably gonna use about six spoons like this which roughly about three grams it's gonna save my powder and also it's not gonna give me a lot of waste at the end but still gonna give me a good result I hope so I simply just sprinkle the powder on top of the soil same for this tank just sprinkle a few spoons on top of the soil so guys the reason why we're adding bacterial powder when we start the, our cycle is because we want to create that biofilm and all this microflora and fauna start to grow in your tank so basically the bacterial powder is the food for all these bacteria which you start to grow in your tank and once your biofilm starts in growing in your tank the biofilm provides the food for all the microorganisms which start to thrive in your tank like copy pots so the copy pots start to eat all this um, all this biofilm which start to grow from bacterial powder and start to thrive that's why at the end of the cycle you can see a lot of copy pots like little bugs just roaming around and they start to produce some waste and this waste is actually food for your shrimp for your baby shrimps and that's why the, the shrimps start to thrive because they have plenty of available foods because a lot of microflora and fauna start to be living in your tank start to produce waste and then shrimps start to eat that waste and the baby shrimps always has a food because the waste everywhere everywhere biofilm and all the microorganisms so all of these things we want to have in our shrimp tanks to help our Curidinia shrimps to thrive and breed well
So now I'm going to connect my water to both system valve and then we're going to fill the water through that valve. Okay, it's connected, we turn it on now. That's it, this one done. It's already started to dripping the water as you can see, yeah? Okay, here you go guys, now the water starts dripping from the floating valves. And now all we need to do is just to wait until we have a full tank. It's few days have passed and I'm back with an update and here are our breeding tanks. This one and that's another one. And as you can see the water is still a little bit cloudy because of the bacterial powder. It's absolutely normal and it's gonna go away in a week or so. I just did an ammonia test and take a look at the result guys. We already have a lot of ammonia in the tank with ADM azonia. But we also have ammonia in the tank with master soil, not as much as where we have a DM ozonia, but still quite a lot. And this is what I want to see. Ammonia is a good for nitrifying bacteria and it helps with the cycle. It's also a good indication that the soil is rich in minerals. So now is the hardest part. Now we have to wait for about eight weeks. And this is when our soil stop leaching ammonia. And I'm going to do around 50% of water change every second week just to help to withdraw some excess of ammonia from the tanks. And you might have a question, why am I call these tanks breeding tanks? Well, the breeding tanks are the shrimp tanks where you aim to breed as many shrimps as possible by creating an ideal environment for them. So they are different from your display planted tanks with not much of hiding space and without any hardscaping and plants maybe with a little bit amount of slow growing plants and mosses. This way you can monitor your shrimps much better and if any shrimp dies, you can spot it straight away. You might have heard that it's beneficial for shrimps to keep them in the planted tanks, but I don't believe it's true. Maybe it's beneficial if you keep neocaridina or simple caridina, but definitely not for high-end caridina and I explain you why. If you ask any experienced shrimp keeper or breeder what's the most important thing in his setup, he will definitely tell you it's an aqua soil. This is because it's very important to choose a good aqua soil, rich in minerals and being able to buffer your pH low enough for high-end caridina shrimp. Caridina shrimp is beneficial from minerals which releases by the soil. Also, do plants beneficial from that? We all know the aqua soil design for plants. It contains lots of minerals, lots of fertilizers. So the rooted plants will suck a lot of minerals out from the soil, also out from the water column. It will reduce the amount of minerals in the water and it's also wearing the soil out much faster. It's definitely not gonna be good for your shrimp. Like for instance, this planted tank, and I like this tank, it look awesome, and I call this tank shrimp heaven, but it's definitely not a heaven for my Caridina shrimp. I added over 60 high-grade galaxy shrimps in this tank, and in the beginning, they started to breed. I had like five berry shrimps here, and I was very excited, but then suddenly, once the plants started to kick off, the shrimp started to disappear. I've noticed some dead shrimps from time to time, and most of the time they died somewhere deep inside the plants where I couldn't see them and today there are almost no shrimps left. This is my experience with planted tank, my best looking tank but my least successful shrimp tank I ever have. So no more fast growing plants or thick soils in my high-end caridinia tanks, learn it hard way. Sorry, talk too much today. Anyways, stay tuned for part two where I'm gonna do update on every step I'm gonna do from today until I'm gonna add in shrimps into these tanks. And I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.